in life I had it listen I don't always say God said I don't always say it I don't always say it but when I hear it I can say it with my full chest that God told me expressly that in this program he is going to select people now he's selecting people for favor he's selecting people for promotion he's selecting people for a turnaround if I mention your own, shout amen. He's selecting people for a new testimony. He's selecting people for elevation. He's selecting people for open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. He's selecting people for a new song. Song of praise. Song of joy. Song of praise. Song of jubilation. Song of joy, song of praise. In this program, he's selecting, he's selecting, he's selecting. He's selecting people. He's selecting people for song of praise, for jubilation in this meeting. That is why I say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Now you want to pray and tell the Lord, I have come into your presence to tarry. I want to sing a new song after this program. If you know how to pray, pray. If you don't know how to pray, you can be looking at other people. I have come into this program. I want to sing a new song. I want to sing a new song. At the end of this, my song must change. My story must change. My narrative must change. Everything about me must change. Everything about me must change. I don't know about you, but for me, everything must change. My story, my song, my outlook, my testimony, everything about me is changed. I am singing a new song. I am singing a new song. I am singing a new song. God is selecting people in this program. Selecting people for favor. Selecting people for promotion. Selecting people for visitation. Definite divine de visitation. Definite divine visitation. I am not missing words. Definite divine visitation. Selecting people. Don't join those who are sleeping. You have come to tarry in the presence of God. And you cannot afford to remain the same. My song shall be hallelujah. When I look at my account balance, I will shout hallelujah. 
When I receive my promotion letter, I will shout hallelujah. When I get the, uh, the promotion that God has promised me, I will shout hallelujah. When the promises that God has promised are beginning to come to pass, I will shout hallelujah. I don't know about you. For me, I'm already practicing my dance steps. I'm already practicing the day I'm going to testify. The Lord is giving you a new song. We have not come this night to fulfill an obligation. We have come to pray. We have come to pray. We have come to seek the face of the Lord. I am going to sing a new song. I don't know about you. I am singing a new song after this program. Over my head, oh Yahweh. Over my head, oh. Let only you be praised. 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 The Lord that needs to be praised in your life. Situation and circumstances that are negative must give way for God to be praised in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If you prayed a prayer that you believe God has answered, say a better amen. Listen to me. There are some prayers that do not have confirmation. But if you know your prayer has confirmation, can you say amen of confirmation? If you know that tonight you have come to tarry so you can carry, can you shout a better amen? <laughs> Sit down. I want to tell you something. Can I tell you something? Pastor Sunday has opened the floor. So now we can fly. We are not flying on the wings of the flesh. We are flying on the wings of the spirit of God. Oh, you didn't hear me very well. If you are there, say, I hear you. We are not flying on the wings of the flesh. We are flying on the wings of the Spirit of God. Say, I hear you, sir. Now, if you heard me, open your Bible to Psalm 27, verse 14. Psalm number 27, verse 14. Listen, it is important for you to understand that what God has in store for you in this program. So that when it is time for you to pray, you will pray appropriately and you will pray accordingly. When you pray appropriately and you pray accordingly, you will be able to appropriate the things that God has set aside for you in this program. But when you pray amiss, you can't get anything from God. Psalm number 27, verse number 14. I'm going to be very, very fast so that we can have time to pray. Psalm 27. Verse 14. The Bible said, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I will come back to this scripture much more later. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. Wait, I say, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now let's add to it Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Read verse 28 to verse 31. Isaiah chapter number 40, verse 28 to verse 31. As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, 
the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power. Can you say power? Shout it now. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I was expecting a better amen. amen. When we say tarry, it's a command. Tarry. By the special grace of God, I've been in the faith for over three decades. Three decades plus. And I have come to understand the place of tarrying in the presence of God. Please don't be distracted because we mean business in this place tonight. I've come to understand that the place of tarrying in the presence of the Lord. You see, we have found ourselves in a generation that is on a fast lane. Everything must be fast. You want to get to school fast. You want to get married fast. You want to make money fast. You want to do everything fast. Even food. You want to eat fast food and the rest of that. But do you understand that there is a place that is called the service lane? And you need to learn to utilize the service lane. The service lane is a place of slowing down. The service lane is a place of re-strategizing. The service, place, uh, service lane is a place of tarrying to reassess and reappraise yourself and then to ask yourself a lot of questions. Because uh, the scripture said in the book of Proverbs, um, chapter 14 and verse 12, it said that it is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is what? Destruction. So when you find yourself on the express lane, to you it is fine, to you it is good, to you it is okay, but you need to switch over. Let me tell your neighbor, switch over. Say it very well, it will not slap you. You need to switch over to the service lane and then tarry in the presence of God. What is the need of you being on the fast lane when you lack direction? What is the need of being on a high speed when you don't have a destination? It is better for you to slow down so that the resources you have will be able to sustain you. The resources you have will be able to carry you and carry you far. It is not the first person that started the race that is always the winner. I have come to understand and to look at the lives of many people and I've come to realize that many people are fixated. They have become stationary in a particular position for a long time. Why? Because they have not built up enough strength for the next level. That is the next level God wants to take you to. And that is why he has brought us together this night and he said, come and tarry in my presence. Listen, the children of Israel left the land of Egypt after spending 430 years. And then they left the land of Egypt and they got into the wilderness. And it was as if they were already getting closer to the promised land. But something happened and they began to go around the mountain and go around the mountain and go around the mountain. How many years? Talk to me now. How many years? 40 years they were going around the mountain. That is like the situation of many people here. I'm going to be speaking to us as God will help me. You are, you are going around the mountain, but God has brought you into this program so that you can receive strength for you to mount up with wings as the eagles. Level must change after this program. I'm not here to psych you. I'm here to tell you what is going to happen. Level must change after this program. In Isaiah chapter 40, where we read, when I read that place in verse 30 in particular, my heart broke because the scripture was more or less indicting us, 
we that are the young men and the young women of the princes of the provinces. In that verse 30, he said, even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fail or fall. The youth who are supposed to be the strengths, the one with strength, the youth who are supposed to be the one to speak with the enemies at the gates, the youth who are supposed to lift up the banner, the youth who are supposed to be the one that will challenge the enemy and say, who is that person that is talking there? The scripture said that the youth are fainting and they are weary. They are fainting and they are weary. Something is, you know, responsible from that, for that. Something is responsible for that. If there should be people that should faint, if there should be people that should be weary, it should be our fathers and our forefathers and our grandfathers. Not you and I. That our pride should be exhibited in our youth. Not you and I. In my study of the scriptures, I've come to realize that men of old who did great exploit. Listen, men of old who did great exploits were men who tarried before God. They were men who tarried before God. It was not as if they were not doing other things, but they had that season of their life, that time, that period of their life where they tarried in the presence of God and they got what they needed for them to do what they needed to do. They knew something that others did not know. And that was why they could do things that people could not do. When I read the scriptures, I began to ask myself, these things, they are not fables. And if they are not fables, and they are not happening in our own generation, it is either that they are not true, or you and I have not come to know the things that we need to know. Listen to me. The scriptures said that the earnest expectation of the creator... They are waiting for who? The manifestation of the sons of God. And they are still waiting. So how come the sons of God are not manifesting? It is because we have not done what we are supposed to do. When we do what we are supposed to do, things that should happen will naturally happen. I speak to you from experience. Right from Abraham down to the apostles, they were men that their generation wondered at. They were men that their generation marveled at the level of exploits that these men did in their time. All scriptures, they were written at four times, they were written for our learning, so that we, through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. God has brought you into this program to expose you to that dimension of encounter that will bring about the manifestation of heaven on earth through you. He didn't say amen. God has brought you into this program eh, to expose you to that dimension of encounter that will make heaven to be real on earth through your hands. In your office, men will experience heaven through you. In your place of business, they will experience heaven through you. In your family, they will experience heaven through you. Because God is bringing you to that level of encounter that anybody that sees you, they will ask you, are you a human being or you are an angel? If I'm talking to you, can you shout amen, 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 amen. That is the dimension God is bringing us to in this program. Amen. When I look at the life of Abraham, I discover that there was something that Abraham knew that gave him boldness. The Bible said that Lot was captured, all right? He wasn't living with Abraham. He was captured. And then uh, the information came to Abraham. And Abraham said to the 318 servants, they were trained in his house. And he said to them, rise up, let's go and fight without prior information. And I was asking myself, what was it that gave this man that boldness? Four nations with their armies. You are 319 servants, servants, not even soldiers, trained in your house. 
to go and fight four nations. There was something that Abraham knew that we don't know. That gave him the boldness to challenge nations. And when I studied the scriptures, I understood what it was. When God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, the Bible said that Abraham built an altar. In chapter 13, Abraham built an altar. In chapter 14, the, the war broke out. A man that has built an altar and built an altar has encountered God, has studied before the presence of God. Is it four nations that cannot, he cannot defeat? Am I talking to somebody? A man who has built an altar to God. Every time and again, he's building an altar. Go and read your Bible. I don't want to do Bible study this night. In chapter 12, he built an altar. Chapter 13, he built an altar. And then in chapter 14, war broke out. Come on. He already had what he, what he needed for him to fight the four nations. And there was no record of casualty. How can there be record of casualty when the lion of the tribe of Judah went with him into the battle? Am I talking to somebody now? Look, when you tarry in the presence of God, you can stand and challenge nations. Because uh, there is no way you tarry in God's presence and you will not carry the presence of God. Moses was another man entirely. Moses ran away from Egypt. I hope you know the story very well. Do you know the story? He ran away from Egypt and ran to the wilderness. But in the wilderness, the backside of the desert, he had an encounter with God. And he saw a bush that was burning, but the bush was not consumed. And he was coming close, and a voice spoke and called his name, Moses, Moses. The place where you are walking is the holy ground. That is the place where immortals are walking. And you have been privileged to walk on the land where immortals are walking. So remove your shoe. And Moses removed his shoe. And he had an encounter with God. And God said, what is in your hand? He said, it's the rod. He said, throw it down. He threw it down. He became a serpent. And he said, pick it up by the tail. He picked it up. He became a rod again. He said, put your hand in your bosom. He put it. Bring it out. He brought it out. He became leprous. Put it back. He put it back. He became clean. Now, go and challenge Pharaoh. If we are going to challenge Pharaoh, oh, you are not there yet. Listen to me. If we are going to challenge the Pharaoh in our time, we need to encounter God on the backside of the desert. We need to tarry in the presence of God until we are fortified. And when you stand and you say unto Pharaoh, let my people go. Do you know, listen, listen, you know that what Moses came to challenge was a status quo that has been there for over 400 years. Was a condition that has been there for 400 years that nobody has come before to say this thing should change now. Why is it like this? Nobody has had that audacity or that temerity to come forth and say this thing must change. But Moses came forth having encountered God at the place of Tarim. Came before Pharaoh even as a stammerer and he said to him, I was just imagining how Moses said it. Pharaoh don't say yes the Lord. Let my people go. Listen to me, whether you are putting on rag or you are putting on anything or you are speaking fluent English or you are not speaking fluent English, when the power of the Lord comes upon your life, situation will submit unto you, sir. Am I talking to somebody? Whatever it is, when you are fortified by the Spirit of God, circumstances will naturally submit. The hood, the hood, eh? the hood, does not make the monk. It is not the container. It is the content. Ask your neighbor, what do you carry? I want to charge you so that when it is time for you to pray, you will pray aright. Listen to me. There are pharaohic kind of situations 
that are existing in your families. You know them. Pharaohic kind of situation. Your grandfather could not stand. He died. Your father could not stand. He died. Now you are in authority. Are you going to die like your father? Won't you say to that pharaohic situation, let my people go. It is in your hand. It is in your hand. And when Moses said it, Pharaoh thought it was a joke. And Moses told him, okay, you don't want to let them go. You will see something. First plague, second plague, third one, fourth, fifth. And then by the ninth one, Moses came and told him, look, you will not see my face again. You don't let these people go. And true to his word, do you know that Pharaoh didn't see the face of Moses again until Pharaoh died? Go and study your Bible. Let's be, let's be students of the scriptures. The last plague was the death of the firstborn. And then Pharaoh sent message. Now you can go. In fact, he sent a prayer request. What was the prayer request? Say, pray for me. When the power of God comes upon you, your enemies will submit prayer requests to you. I don't like that your amen. I don't like it. That's your amen needs encouragement. I say when the power of God comes upon you, your enemy will submit prayer requests on your altar. You see, when I read the story of Joshua, I was wondering, I'm trying to summarize because of my time. I was wondering, how, how, how would a man just say, sun, stand still, moon, stand still, on the valley of Ajalon, and then in the plain of Gibeon. Do you know that Joshua had an encounter? Go and read Joshua chapter 1. God told him that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Ah! Ah! As I was with Moses. So, so Joshua was asking, how was God with Moses? He was there when pillar of cloud and pillar of fire was escorting Moses. He saw it. He was there when Moses rod, stick, rod, full of stick, he stretched it on the water and the water parted titter and titter. He was there. He was there when they passed through the water and the water was like this and like this. He was there. Now that it was his time, and God said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. No man will be able to stand you. And then the battle was raging. And Joshua remembered, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. There was no shaking in his mind when he said, son, stand thou still. Because at the beginning of his journey, listen and listen very well. At the beginning of his journey, he encountered God. Many of you are too fast. You are fast. It is not by speed. It is knowing where you are going to. Ah, all my mates are married and so what? All my mates are buying cars and so what? You needed to encounter God at the beginning of your journey. Because challenges will come in the middle of the journey. And if you have not encountered God and there is no word from him, no power from him, no utterance from him, nothing from him, how will you be able to command the situation to submit unto you? Let me tell you about David. David. David was a young man, was a youth like you and I. You know I'm a youth. <laughs> you know I'm a youth now. If you don't know, no, now I'm a youth. You can see it. God bless you. Every eye that is seeing me as a youth, you see where. And God will make you to see doors of opportunity that will open for you. David was a youth and it was his season as it is your season tonight. It was his season 
And then God sent Samuel to go to the house of Jesse to anoint him. But when Samuel came, Jesse brought out Eliud, brought out this person, brought out that person. He said, no, these are not the people God is telling me about. God is telling me that there is somebody else. The father of David forgot that he had a son that was taking care of, of sheep in the wilderness. Listen to me. It does not matter who forgets you. The day God remembers you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The day God remembers you. See, all the things that have been stored up for others, everything will be transferred unto you. David was the only person in the Bible that I have read that anointing was waiting for him until he came before anointing became active because the man upon whom the anointing, oh, the man upon whom the anointing has not come and until he came, the anointing was not active. The anointing was waiting. The anointing was waiting. Anointing is waiting here tonight. Anointing is waiting here tonight. Anointing is waiting here tonight. Because it is your time to be anointed. Listen to me. There is the Goliath that is coming. And there is the anointing that will bring down Goliath. And when Goliath came, if you read that story, you will see that from the beginning to the end, David was not afraid. He wasn't. He wasn't. He has encountered God in the place of tarrying. He carried a special anointing. So when they told him, you are a useless boy, he said, ah, is there not a cause? When Saul told him, you, have, you can't fight this man. He is a man of battle from his young age. Now you, you are just a shepherd boy. Ah, what are you going to use? Oh yeah, wear this thing. He wore it and wore the MS. Ah, daddy, daddy, this thing is too heavy. I can't use it. It's okay, so what are you going to use? You just give me five stone. I have my sling. I will use five stone. From the beginning to the end, David was not afraid. Many of us are afraid. They are afraid of tomorrow. They are afraid of what am I going to eat. They are afraid of how am I going to survive in this economy. Listen to me. This economy will favor me. <laughs> Say it for yourself. In this economy, this economy will favor me. Listen. At the end of the tenure of Bala Blue, eh? at the end of the tenure of Bala Blue, I will look at my account, account balance and I will shout, Hallelujah! That's what my song... Am I talking to somebody? And David went before Goliath and Goliath looked at him and said, but you're a small boy. Say, I may be small, but I am mighty. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am, somebody is in me. You are in the world. And uh, what's his name? Goliath said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut off, cut off your neck and I will feed you to the beds of the air. And David said, no, back to sender. I will kill you. I will cut off your neck. I will feed you to the beds of the air. Do you know that when David was making this declaration, sir, he didn't have a sword in his hand. He only had five stones and one sling. But he said to Goliath, I will cut off your neck. Listen to me. There are times you don't need to bother yourself. How is God going to do it? When you get to the point where God needs to make a way, he will make a way where there seems to be no way. If I'm talking to you, shout, yes! I feel like taking offering. Give me offering box. Give me offering box. Listen. I told you that level is going to change after this program. And I mean it. The kind of wealth you have not experienced before. Because you have come to tarry in God's presence. You will carry the grace that will bring the wealth upon your life. Give me a song. Let's take offering. Quickly. The much I have said, I know has made impact. Aya, give me a song. Who is singing for me?
Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. Oh, that's what my song will be. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's come on. what my song will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. Oh, that's what my song will be. Oh, yes, that's what. Oh yes, hallelujah. 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 That's what my song will be. 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 Oh yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Oh yes, hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 We say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Hallelujah. 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 That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. 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 That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. 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 That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah, 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 hallel
Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Somebody shout! Sit down. Let me tell you something about the three young Hebrew children. These were young men that had this excellent spirit of God upon them. Amen. And they were brought before the king. And the king said, I have set up the idol. You need to bow. After you have heard the sound of the dulcimer and all of that. And they said to the king, O king, live forever. As for us, we have tarried before the presence of God. We carry the presence of God. And the presence of God is too big in us for us to be bowing down to an idol. You know why many of you are struggling with fornication and masturbation and immorality and the rest of that? It's because you have not tarried in the presence of God to the point of carrying the presence of God. When you carry the presence of God, you will not submit the presence of God that is inside of you on the altar of immorality. You won't do it. Because you carry something bigger. And that was why they looked at Nebuchadnezzar eyeball to eyeball. Come on. Excuse me, sir. How do you imagine that we that are carrying the presence of God should now come and be bowing down to this your man-made God? It's not possible. The God whom we serve will deliver us. But assuming that he refuses, he fails, he neglects, he delays in delivering us, we will still not bow down to your God. And at the end of the day, it was confirmed that there is no other God that is reigning apart from the God of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Listen, your history or your story has not entered into the history of men because you have not decided to stand. You have been bowing and bowing and bowing. But the day you decide to burn instead of bowing, your story will enter into the history of men. It will be said in that your school that I was a girl in this school that no lecturer saw her on this. It will be said. It will be said in that office where you are working that there is a staff in this office that never participated in anything called my practice. It will be said. For men that know their God. What do I say about Elijah? You know, Elijah came to the king and said to the king, according to my word, there will not be rain. You know, the way he said it, I used to think it was only rain that Elijah said will not fall. But I discovered that Elijah stopped both the rain and the dew. Nothing. Nothing. Both rain and dew. He stopped both of them. And he didn't pray. We need to come to that point where we are men and women who are carrying authority. 
that you enter into the bus and a situation is challenging you, you lift up your hand, you speak to that situation without telling driver, driver, wait, let me go and fast and pray and come back. Elijah did not pray. He just said to the, to the king, O king, according to my word, there will not be rain or dew in this land. And the king thought he was a madman. First month, second month, third month, rain stopped, dew stopped, one year, two years, and they began to look for Elijah. They began to look for Elijah. Listen, when you tarry in God's presence and you carry what you should carry, they will look for you. They will look for you. They are not looking for you right now because at the moment you are part of the problem. Mm. When you are part of the problem, they will not look for you. But when you are the solution, they will look for you. They looked for Elijah for two years. And after two years, they thought, yeah, Obadiah saw him. And Obadiah said, ah, we have been looking for you. Elijah said, go and tell the king that Elijah is here. He said, God forbid, I will not go. I should go and tell the king that has been looking for you that you are here. And as I turn my back, the wild wind of the Lord will carry you away. And the king will come and kill me. No, sir. <laughs> Please, it is me and you. Let's go. When you become the solution to the problem of this nation, they will look for you. We are thinking that these things are impossible. But you see, the Bible said that with God, all things are what? Possible. All things are possible when we do what we need to do. We need such young men and women who will be bold to speak to kings and speak to situations and speak to circumstances and speak to everything that is challenging the power of God in our generation and say, look, this thing must stop and it will stop. And it will stop. Just a moment, please. When we tarry in God's presence, we will carry what this one's carry. And the question is, what was it that these people knew that gave them such boldness, that gave them such audacity, that made them to be able to stand, to challenge status quo, to challenge kingdom, to challenge authority, to challenge principles, to challenge laws that were promulgated, even the laws that cannot be altered, they challenged those laws. And the laws changed because of them. What was it that they knew? I saw the answer. Let me show you. In Daniel chapter 11. I saw the answer in the Bible. In Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. The Bible said, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do what? Exploit. By virtue of the knowledge of their God that they have. Please look up. He said they shall receive capacity for them to do exploits. Receiving capacity to do exploits. Many of us have not received the needed capacity because uh, we don't know our God. We don't know our God. My people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. What you don't know, you don't know it. There's no two ways about it. But the day you come to know what you are supposed to know, I bet you, no man will be able to stand on your way because you have come to know what you needed to know. The magnitude of exploit that you will do, both in the secular and in the spiritual, depends on the volume of resources at your disposal. And the volume of resources at your disposal is determined by the level of the knowledge of God that you have. That is why somebody like Lazarus can die. And Mary and Martha said to Jesus, he has died. And Jesus Christ said, he has not died. He's sleeping. There are two different levels. 
There are two different levels. The level of the knowledge of God that you have will determine what you will do. Listen, when I got married, I've shared this testimony before. Permit me to share it again. When I got married newly, and then we we're praying, and God gave us, gave us fruit of the womb. God gave us because me too, I carry the fruit of the womb. And God gave us. It's not only my wife that carry, two of us carry the fruit of the womb. Because when she is sleeping, and then you are trying to sleep, and then she wake up, you have to wake up. When she wants to eat pepper soup by 12 a.m., you have to go and look for pepper soup. So two of us carry the fruit of the womb. Do you get it now? Do you get it now? Uh-huh. So one day I came back from work, and then she came and said, ah, it's like uh, something has happened. Though. I said, what happened? He said, I-, I saw blood. Blood was coming out from my leg. You know, that is a sign that there is miscarriage. Ah, you saw blood coming out. But I have a level of knowledge of the God that I serve. That the Bible said that none of us we cast our young in our midst. Are you listening to me? And I said to her, Ama, that baby that you are carrying in your womb cannot come out from that womb until the day of delivery. As for miscarriage, you cannot miscarry. It's not possible. Please, can I have food to eat? Because I am hungry. They that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. We need men and women in our time that will do exploits in our generation. If every one of us here that is seated there tonight tarry in God's presence and carry the glory of God that we need to carry in this program, we'll be like the foxes that Samson captured and he tied them two by two. And he put fire in their tail and set them into the midst of the farm of the Philistines. And they set everywhere a place. I'm speaking in parables, but you understand what I'm saying. How did they know their God? They tarried. Each of them, I have told you, they tarried. They tarried in God's presence. Let me show you something in Isaiah chapter 40. I will tell you a few things and we pray. We we'll rise up to pray. Isaiah chapter 40. We read this place all the time, but I saw something as I was preparing for this meeting. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to verse 31. He said, As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fail. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Look up, sir. Why is it that... They can now mount up with wings as eagles. And then they can run and not be weary. And they walk and they are not fainting. It is because they are connected to the God in verse 28. He said he is the one that does not faint and does not get wearied. When you tarry in God's presence, you will carry what is in God. Listen to me. When you stay in God's presence, what happens is that, oh shit. I don't know how to put it. Okay, let's go back to Genesis. In Genesis, God formed man out of the dust of the earth. All right? And then the man was there, lifeless. And the scripture said that God breathed into the nostrils of the man. Are you there? And the man became a living soul. What was in God went into the man and the man became alive automatically. That is why the scripture said that ye are gods. Because what was in God is what is in you. Now, in the same vein, there is no way you that is fainting, 
you that is weak, you that is overwhelmed, you that is wearied, you have tarried in God's presence. When you tarry in God's presence, God does not faint. God does not get wearied. God does not get weak. So when you tarry in his presence, that thing that is in God will be transferred into you. Be transferred into you. So you carry what is in God's presence. That is why he said that they that wait upon the Lord, so you must wait. If you don't wait upon the Lord, you cannot renew your strength. You will keep fainting. Little things will discourage you. Now and again, we receive phone call. Hello, sir. I am depressed. I am depressed. Young men are depressed. Why are you depressed? Because you are not tarrying in God's presence. When you tarry in God's presence, you can't be depressed. What will depress you? Every situation I want to depress you is an opportunity to manifest the power of God. An opportunity. You look at it, you pray simple prayers, you see the power of God. You add that testimony to your list of testimonies of what God has done for you. I woke up one day and then I went to ease myself. And as I was urinating, I was feeling some sensation in my private part. And I looked at what was coming out. The urine was red as blood. Ah, blood again. I left it. Next time, I went to unit, then blood came out again. Ah, and now Pete, Google, uh, Google now on your phone. And I began to Google it. What is the meaning of blood in your urine? And Auntie Google said, if there is urine, the blood in your urine is a sign of post cancer. But something in me said no. That GS told us while he was in India, he was diagnosed to have post cancer. But God told him that cancer cannot develop in your body. Did you hear that testimony? And I said to myself, ah, no now, like father, like son. If father does not have post how can son have post He He's not going to work now. Help me tell three people, go to work, go to work, go to work, go to work now. Go to work now. Go to work. Listen to me. I speak with every sense of humility. I didn't pray prayers. I did not pray prayers. I just said, if it cannot develop in the body of my father. I am not a bastard though. I'm not a bastard. That the GS is my father. Eh? If you don't know, know it now. He's my father. So if it cannot work in the life of my father, it cannot work in my life. And that is the end. I didn't go for tests. Come and test me. Do I have post it? It's not necessary. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will walk and not be weary. They will run and will not faint. We need to come to that level. Are you there? We need to come to that level. Six things that happen when you wait, and I will close. Six things. When you wait upon the Lord. Number one, when you tarry in God's presence, it will strengthen your heart to undo great things. It will strengthen your heart to undo great things. Many of us are, we speak less of ourselves, we look down on ourselves, we bemoan ourselves, we reduce ourselves, we believe that nothing good can come out of yourself and the rest of that. It is because you have not tarried in the presence of God. You can't be tarried in the presence of the God that created the whole universe and all the galaxies, the millions and billions of galaxies and then you'll be carrying a small mind. It's not possible. When you tarry in God's presence, you will carry a big mind. You will believe that all things are possible. Like I believe that all things are possible. It will strengthen your mind. You can read Psalm 27 and verse 14. My time is almost gone. Some of you cannot handle multi-million dollars because you think that you must do yahoo yahoo before you can make big money. Listen to me. There is a way God has been leading me for some time now. It's the way God has been leading me for some time. A pastor friend of mine said, he said this economy, that God told him that this economy will favor us, will favor him. 
And when I heard it, God did not tell me, oh, you know that God used to call some people, but some people call God. Uh-huh. Now, God did not tell me. God told him that this economy will favor him. But me, I now told God that this economy will favor me too. Are you listening to me? And I stand before the pulpit of many colors to tell you that this economy has been favoring me. Favoring me. As in favoring me. When you tarry in God's presence, you will receive information. Such information is not distributed in the marketplace. Where you are doing balanda. No. Such information is disclosed in the place of tarrying. That is why as you come to this program, don't allow anybody to distract you. Focus. Pray. Listen. Focus. Pray. Listen. God will give you a multi-million idea that as you are leaving this place and you are implementing that idea, ah, you will come back with testimony. Your amen is a generator. God is giving somebody a key this morning that is opening the door that is changing the history of your entire family. Your entire family. Listen to me. There is somebody here now. The place where your feet, where your feet is going to tread after this meeting. The feet of your forefather has not gotten there before. I can hear it in my ears that somebody's feet is going to tread where the feet of your forefathers has not reached before. In your generation, you are the first person to get to that place. Oh my God. You are sitting down now. You are the first person to get to that height. The door God is opening for you after this program. Men will see you and they will ask you, how did you do it? Number two, when you tarry, you will possess your inheritance. Psalm 37 verse 9, my time is almost gone. Psalm 37 verse 9, when you tarry in God's presence, you will possess what belongs to you. Many of you, what belongs to you has been denied you. A comedian said something very funny, but let's draw some lessons from it. He said, you need to hustle, hustle, so that they will not use a tinted glass motor to carry what belongs to you and pass you. That is how it has been with some people. What is rightfully yours, you, your eyes were open like this, and your inheritance was given to another person. But you see, when you tarry in God's presence, number one, you will get your inheritance. You will even get the inheritance that does not belong to you. You know, I will prove you from the scriptures, to him that has, more will be given to him. To him that does not have, the one that he has will be taken away from him and given to the person that has. So when you possess your inheritance, people who have but do not understand what they have. It will be taken away from them and be given to you. But it can only happen in the place of tarry. You have to wait upon the Lord. Stop being in a hurry. Wake up in the morning. Wah! You run out of the house. No. Stop being in a hurry. Tarry in God's presence. Number three. When you tarry, God will exalt you. He will exalt you above Men. Listen, there is no competition in life. It is not by Nami first come. No. It is what do you carry? The white hair on the head of Methuselah cannot be compared to the wisdom of Solomon. Mm. So when you tarry in God's presence, God will exalt you above the ancient of days. I'm speaking in parables now. He will exalt you above ancient of days. That is why you will see a sister that just entered a location, a new parish. She's a newcomer. 
and she gave her life to Christ and she tarried in God's presence. And before you say Jack Robinson, somebody has taken her name to marriage committee. And people who are not tarrying in the presence of God, but they are tarrying in church, they will say, ah, ah, we have been here since. This one that just came now, they now took a name to marriage committee. Excuse me, ma. It's not tarrying in church that I'm talking about. I am talking about tarrying in the presence of God. Stop tarrying in church. Tarry in God's presence. Number four, when you tarry, you cannot be put to shame. Psalm 69 verse 6. Because God will always be there to give you direction. Somebody said, he said, when God blow your whistle, eh, in a football match, when God blow your whistle, even if na rapa you tie, he said you will you go play for the match. Even when you're not ready. But because God has said it, you will be featured. David was not ready when he was promoted. He wasn't ready. He was called from the backside. So when, God, when you tarry in God's presence, he will exalt you. He will give you direction. You will just see yourself being at the right place at the right time. And that is why the scripture said that the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places because I have a goodly heritage. You cannot tarry in God's presence and your heritage will be ungodly. It's not possible. Number five. My time is gone. Grandma, please, no verse. When you tarry, you will receive mercy. Psalm 1, 2, 3, verse 2. When you tarry, you will receive mercy. I read the story of Saul in 1 Chronicles chapter 17. God was speaking to David. And God said to David, I withdrew my mercy from Saul. I withdrew my mercy from Saul. Saul was not supposed to be the king. But he was made the king. But God withdrew his mercy from him. And that was why the man fell from glory to nothing. From grace to grass. But when you tarry in God's presence, you will receive mercy. Listen, there's a difference between mercy and favor. I don't get time. There's a difference between mercy and favor. Eh? Big difference between mercy and favor. When mercy speaks, it doesn't matter who is there. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter who likes you, who does not like you. It doesn't matter who is beefing you. Who has bad belly for you? It does not matter. When mercy speaks, doors open. When mercy speaks, people will remember you. When mercy speaks, people will give you what you are not qualified for. When mercy speaks, people will just see you and say, I just feel like blessing you. You have not heard it before. You will hear it after this program. I just feel like blessing you. That is the slang of mercy. I just feel like giving you a car. That is the slang of mercy. Your boss will just enter the office in the morning and see your face. And he will tell you, I just feel like promoting you. Ah. You didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. When you tarry, number six, the last one. When you tarry, God will rescue you from the mouth of the devourer. There are times they have set up trap for you, but you never know. But because you tarry in God's presence, God will go ahead of you to frustrate the tokens of the liars and make the diviners mad. You will just come and see everywhere scattered and you'll be wondering, what happened? And they will say, ah, they set trap for you, but before you come, God has disgraced them. The Lord will disgrace your enemies. I didn't come tonight to come and sweat. I know that when I pray, I will sweat. But I came tonight so that I can have access. Access into the presence of God. I don't know who is there with me. That has come tonight to have access into God's presence. 
so that you can get connected into the heavenlies. And when you begin to command, men begin to wonder, where have you been? My time is gone. The dimension, there is a dimension of the manifestation of Christ. There is a dimension of the manifestation of Christ that God wants to bring us into. That God wants us to get into in this program. For the men of old, the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 12 and verse, uh, verse 3, he said, they drew of the well of salvation. But for us, the scripture said through the mouth of Jesus Christ that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The era of drawing with cup and drawing with bucket has passed. This is the era of you standing and the rivers of living water is flowing and mysteries are coming out of your mouth and you are standing in the board meeting with all your orgasms in the office and you are speaking mysteries and they are wondering where is this person coming from? Where have you been all this while? They will not understand that on the 27th and 28th of September you were in Bariga and you were tarrying in the presence of God and from the presence of God you came out a different person. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. There is a dimension that God wants to bring us into. And if you know it, you desire it, you get into it. I don't believe in one being, you know, relevant spiritually and you're not relevant in the secular. My Bible tells me in 3 John verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. So as my soul is prospering, I should also prosper physically. I should also prosper in every area of my life. So as a lawyer, I should prosper secular in the secular. I should come to the court. And while I am there in the court, the heaven is downloading in my head the cases and the authority and the arguments I should give to the judge. And after giving to the judge all the arguments that is downloaded in my head, by the spirit of God, the judge will say, with all this authority, counsel, that you are posited before me, I give this judgment in your favor. It can't be otherwise. Men of old were useful, both in the kingdom and outside the kingdom. Daniel was one of them, was a man of God, and he was a man of government. He was a man of God. He was a man of government. And because he was connected, he reigned in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. He reigned in the kingdom of Belshazzar. He reigned in the kingdom of Cyrus. He reigned in the kingdom of Darius. Four generations, Daniel was there. He was relevant. You can be relevant in your office if you tarry in God's presence. Are you there? Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. If you know it, sing it very well. Out of my belly shall A flow, flow rivers. Rivers of living water. E -a -e -a -e. Out of my belly. Out of my belly. Shall flow rivers. Rivers of living waters. E -a -e -a -e. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. E -a -e -a -e. Wait on the Lord. 
Lord waits, waits. Stay with the Lord, stay, stay. Build up your strength. Build up your strength. Wait on the Lord, wait, wait. Somebody say, I, I will stay, stay at the altar ha! to drink of the living water till I overflow. I'll be satisfied. For this is what the nations need. Oh, I will stay. I will stay. Altar to drink of the living water. And be satisfied for this is what the nations need. Can you tell the Lord that feed me now with the heavenly water? I, stay. I need to drink from the water from the altar. I, I need to drink from the water. I need to drink of the water from the altar. I want to drink of the living water. I want to drink of the living water. I want to overflow. I want to overflow and be fully satisfied. I'll be satisfied. For this is what the nations need. The Bible said, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Listen to me. Amen. 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 We are going to pray that scripture like this. Listen, it is important to pray appropriately. He said, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. If there is going to be an outflow, there must be a source. There must be a source. And when you get connected to that source, then you are guaranteed of a constant flow of that water. So you want to pray and tell the Lord, connect me to the source of the living water. Do you get it? Connect me to the source of the living water. My time is gone. My time is gone. You see, when you are connected, it, it play, listen to me. I can, I can share testimonies with you of how people will just call me and just say, are you so, 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 and so, and so, person? I say, yes, it's okay. Can you do this job for me? And they say, yes, I can do it. Okay, do it. And they will just send money to you. There is one I did about a week or two weeks ago. I don't know the person. I've not seen her before. If I see her now, I don't know her. Just call, and we did a transaction, and we made our money. We are raising a generation of young men and women who, when they come to the church, they are functional. When they get to the world, they are functional. I don't want to deal with men that it is only in the church that they are functional. But when they come to the world, they cannot contribute intelligently to discussion. And it will make Christianity to look as if we don't understand what we are doing. I was somewhere last week, about a week now, and then somebody said to me, he said, you need to make this sacrifice. And I said, I will not do it. That I'm a man of, I'm a child of God. He said that is that is the lies they have been telling you people. They have used religion to blind your face. I told him stop there, my friend, stop there. Do I look like a non entity to you? I was born in a Muslim family. I have studied ancient religion. It remains more like this. I for joined a kanka. 
because I have studied books about religion. And then I gave my life to Christ. Do I look like a fool to you? You listen to me, you think I don't have intelligence? What are we talking about? You meet me in court, I will stand and defeat you. You meet me in the church, I will stand and defeat you. Because I am there. Let us stop this thing that we are, and then when they are talking religion, religion, you too will join them and be saying religion, religion. Listen to me. Religion brought advancement. Religion brought technology. I told the young man, he said, let us go back and be doing our culture, our culture. I said the best our culture did for us was to tell us that you can fly in the night as a witch. But when religion came, religion brought education. Education now told us that from your brain, you can create aeroplane. So you don't need to wait till night to fly. You can fly in the daytime. When you tarry in God's presence, you will receive substance. So you want to pray. I am connected, but I want to be connected again. You want to pray and say, Lord, connect me to that source. When it begins to flow, ah, no more. Make I pray. <laughs> he said, my time is up. My leg carry me, they go. My leg carry me, they go. Anywhere better, they carry me, they go. Anywhere better, they carry me. Oh, yeah, pray now. Pray and tell the Lord, connect me to that source. Connect me to that source. Out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. That river of living water must flow. I cannot leave this place dry anymore. No, 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 no. I cannot leave this place the same way I came. Connect me to that source of living water. Let it flow. 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 